The Exorcist is arguably one of the scariest horror movies ever made, even more so when you consider that an actual murderer made a cameo in it. But just who was Paul Bateson? Despite the spider walk, the scene that tends to really upset viewers of The Exorcist is when the central character, Reagan, goes in for medical testing. Producers made the unconventional decision to go to a real facility, the New York University Medical Center, and use some of their medical staff instead of actors. The scene in which blood spurts from the 12-year-old's neck as part of the procedure hits a nerve, even in a movie that pushed the limits of what people had seen on screen to that point. Film fans still comment on the scene's realism and how it's worse than any possession scene the film throws their way. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! During the hospital sequence, a bearded X-ray tech has a brief interaction with Reagan. Reagan, I'm just gonna move you down on the table, okay? Next, the tech's hands are seen holding Reagan's head still as a radiologist sticks a needle into her neck. That man was Paul Bateson, who was an X-ray technician at NYU's medical center during the filming of the movie. Though his role in the film was rather forgettable, Paul Bateson went on to be remembered for the murder of at least one person. Four years later, on September 22, 1977, Arthur Bell, a writer at The Village Voice and a gay rights activist, received an anonymous phone call. About a week prior, another Village Voice writer named Addison Beryl had been found killed in his apartment. Bell had reported on this, with the assumption that this was another crime by a psychopathic serial killer who had been stalking the gay community. As Bell later wrote in The Village Voice, the caller, who turned out to be Paul Bateson, asked him, is that your picture on page 23 of The Voice? Bell answered no and told Bateson that it was Addison Verrill's picture. Bateson then responded that he killed Verrill and that the picture didn't look like him. From there, Bell asked Bateson what Verrill looked like, and the killer responded, Better than that. Look, I like your story and I like your writing, but I'm not a psychopath. According to Bateson, he met Addison Verrill in the Badlands, a gay bar in the West Village. The men spent all night drinking and using various drugs before going back to Verrill's apartment for sex in the early morning hours. Afterward, Bateson said he felt rejected, as he wanted more than sex. He told Bell, I wanted a lasting thing, something that would go beyond sex into friendship, a lover, or marriage. However, Verrill didn't want any of that, which made Bateson angry. Bateson said he hit Verrill over the head with a frying pan, then stabbed him in the chest with a kitchen knife. When the call with Bateson was over, Bell went to the police. Police ultimately honed in on Bateson as their suspect, but he immediately denied the allegations. According to Esquire, he claimed that he was drunk during the police interrogation. Bateson also said that he never called Bell and that his confession was simply him retelling the story he read in the village voice. No one bought it. In 1979, the New York Times reported that Bateson was sentenced to prison for 20 years to life. The paper also stated the possibility that Bateson was the serial killer behind the deaths of six dismembered gay men. As the Times noted, the men were assumed to be gay due to traces of clothing that were only sold by shops that catered to the gay community in Greenwich Village. The prosecutor, William Hoyt, claimed that Bateson had bragged to an acquaintance about dismembering the bodies and putting them into garbage bags. However, no evidence was ever found to connect him to these killings. That said, Bateson's imprisonment did coincide with the end of the murders. Bateson was released on parole on August 25, 2003, having served a 24-year sentence. After that, he disappeared. However, according to the global Jewish genealogy website jewishgen.org, a man named Paul F. Benson, who had the same birth date, died on September 15, 2012 at the age of 72.